In this video, we'll discuss how to formulate statistical questions, gather data, and use samples. Now, data is pieces of information that we collect. It can be both numerical and categorical, depending on the questions in which we ask. We can do different types of studies to collect such data. We can do an observational study where we observe and collect the data without influencing the outcomes whatsoever, kind of like watching a class as a teacher teaches. Or we could do an experiment where we're actively altering characteristics and collecting data to determine the influence of that alteration, kind of like changing the teacher one week to the next and seeing what happens with the class. Now, when we are collecting our data and performing experiments, we want to ask statistical questions. And these questions must anticipate variability in the data and allow for data collection and analysis. Those are two key parts. If it doesn't do those things, it is not a statistical question. So let's look at a couple questions and see what we can determine. Here, how many pieces of candy did Aaron eat yesterday? The solution may be numerical, but it is not statistical because there is no variability in that data. Aaron ate a very specific amount on a specific day. Yes, you can collect that information, but there's no variability there in that solution. Whereas how many pieces of candy did each child in the class eat each day? That would be statistical because there's variability from one student to the next. And then there could be analysis of that data. For example, what's the average amount of candy that the students ate? Now, as we do our investigations and experiments, we wanna understand what is the population so that we can get appropriate samples. The population is the full set of members that a study's investigating, whereas a sample is a subset or a small collection of that population. When we're doing our sampling, we wanna make sure that we are running a random sample and not a convenient sample. A random sample guarantees that all members of the population have an equal chance of being selected to be part of the sample. This will help it be representative of the entire population as long as the sample is large enough. Now, there are four common methods used for random sampling. There's the simple random sample, which in this method, we take and look at the entire population and randomly select members from that population. In a stratified random sample, the population is subdivided into groups or strata. And then within each of those groups, a simple random sample is performed. This can be helpful if the groups are distinct while also representing the overall population. For example, if you're doing a study and you wanna make sure that all socioeconomic groups are being represented, a stratified random sample can be helpful. Another form is called the cluster random sample. And in a cluster random sample, we divide the population into groups, but the random selection happens at the group level. And everything in that single group is part then of the sample. This can be helpful when we're looking at larger systems. For example, maybe we're investigating townships or cities of a certain size. We can't look at every single city in the United States, so we take a random sample of cities of a specific size. And lastly, we have the systematic random sample. This is often used in things like doing searches for uh, when you see uh, police out for DUIs or when they're doing searches at the airport, where you take the kth member in a line and do the sample. That helps to decrease bias and make sure that is as random as possible. Make sure everybody's no bias. Now let's look at some examples. Say we ask the first 20 people that walk into a store their opinion. This is considered a convenient sample because there's nothing random about that. You're just choosing the very first 20 people you see because that's the easiest people to grab. In contrast, what if we ask every 10th person that walks into the store their opinion for the entire day. That is an example of a systematic random sample because you don't know who the 10th person will be at each time and it's occurring all day long so you're hitting 
all groups of people that may come during the different parts of the day. How about if we randomly interview 100 people from each zip code in Virginia? Because we are splitting the groups by zip code, that makes it a stratified random sample because we have our groupings and then we're randomly sampling within that. And that is an effective method for doing random sampling. Now, we care so much about the random sampling because those characteristics should represent our population proportionally as long as our sample is large enough. However, if we have a convenient sample, this will not necessarily be true. So what does this mean? Say we have a company that produces 5,000 cell phones a day. They randomly sample 200 phones and find that four are defective. How many phones should the company expect to be defective each day? Because they're using a random sample, they can apply this to the population. So they know that in their sample, there are four defective to the 200 total phones. That means that the ratio of the population should match that ratio of the sample. And we can set up a proportion to help us solve this. So four defective to 200 total should equal X out of the 5,000 total. And I'm putting the units here of defective and total to help us make sure that we're matching our proportion correctly. So here I will cross multiply. So I have the four defective times the 5,000 total equals the 200 total times X. I'm going to divide by those 200 total from the sample. That'll simplify my right hand side to one X and my unit of total over total will simplify to one, leaving me only will tell me the defective amount of phones. And when I simplify that, that will come to 100 defective. That means that the company should expect about 100 defective phones each day. And they can only make this expectation if the sample is random. Now, as we're trying to solve statistical problems, we have four common steps that we will follow. First, we will formulate questions that are statistical in nature. We will then collect data using a random sample. We will then use different statistical methods to help us analyze that data. And once it's analyzed, we will use the results to help us interpret the results to the population or maybe predict something about the population. So think back to our previous example. A company's trying to understand the number of defective phones during production. The question they ask is how many phones will be defective for each day of production? To collect the data, they did a random sample. Maybe they used a form of a stratified random sample where they said they're going to select 20 phones randomly each hour of a 10 hour workday, hence the 200 phones. Once they have their sample, they're able to analyze it and determine that four of those 200 phones are defective. Using that information, they can then interpret that to the population to determine that there's likely going to be about 100 defective phones from the total batch of phones being produced each day. So putting this information together allows them to use the sample to better understand what's happening during production and then they can make better choices about what to do as a company, either to improve that or to how to make even something like their warranty.